Hello, hello, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. I'm very well excited to welcome you to yet another promising edition of the Extra Speed Life. My own name is Sharif Daramola, and um, before we kickstart the session, I would like to run through our daily routine by confirming that we are all on the same page. So if you can see my screen, you can hear my voice loud and clear, please let me know in the comment section by typing hi. So typing hi will confirm that we are all on the same page, and then we can kickstart the session. So I look forward to your comments, please, as I load up my comment box so that we can get this started. All right, all right. So I can see a handful of comments here. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll take, let's see. Okay, I can see Rand, Rand Kumar. Good morning to you. 27553215. Good morning to you. Um, Fun Ang. Good morning to you. Glad to have you around with us. Um, who else is here again? Okay, I see you, S. S. Zika. Good morning to you. Um, one thing, sixty-nine. Thank you very much, T. J. Twenty twenty-three. Good morning to you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hello, Carrie. Good morning. I see your comment there. All right. All right. So, in the absence of no, uh, in the absence of um, no issues, um, let's kick that the session once again so on this note i welcome you all once again to yet another promising edition my own name is sharif daramola and for the next one hour i'm going to be your host as we are going to be diving into the financial market um, looking at things from a technical standpoint and of course using simple and fundamental tools such as trend lines key levels and chart patterns to gain valuable insight into the historical price movement of the assets on our watch list for this week. Well, so far so good. We have been monitoring four major financial assets, which includes the U.S. All Spot, the U.S. Tech 100, which is popularly known as the Nasdaq. We also have the GBP USD and the XAU USD, which is popularly known as the gold spot, all on our watch list. And in fact, we are going to be delving into the details and see how we can manage our existing position and, of course, use the data we can see on the chart to position ourselves ahead of the New York session today. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, I know you might be asking, what is this all about? Well, as technical traders, we gather in this community on a daily basis in anticipation of the New York session, where we come to review our existing trading positions, see how we can manage them, and of course, prepare ourselves in such a way that we can position our next move ahead of the New York session. So once again, you are welcome on board. And in fact, I do encourage you to stay tuned in so you don't miss out on any of the valuable ideas and and plans we have for today's trading session. I also encourage you to be part of the subsequent editions as the more time you spend with us in this community, the better you will become in using the strategy we've adopted in this community and of course be able to eventually use the information you gather here to make your own independent trading decisions. So I welcome you all once again and in that regard, we shall be diving right into the business. As usual, the first thing we do is to check on the economic calendar. Of course, for those of us who have been with us for a while now, you know how important this is. 
as these fundamental factors often manifest on the charts in technical patterns and price movement. By monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information needed to position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential move prior, during, and even after this economic event. So on the economic calendar, we usually focus on high-impact events from economic dockets that affect the assets on our watch list. Now, basically, based on the asset we have for this week, we will be focusing on only the United States and the United Kingdom economic dockets. And when I was able to spool out the event we have for today, Thursday, October 26, we have a handful of them to look out for, making this day um, a day that might likely witness some volatility in the market. And of course, we do want to be part of any potential move that happened today. So the first event we are going to be looking forward to today is the core personal consumption expenditure coming in from the United States economic docket um, in about two hours from now. Now, for those of us who don't know, this data is released by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, and it is an average of the amount of money the consumers spend in a month on durable goods, consumer products, and services. It is considered as an important indicator of inflation, and generally speaking, a high reading is considered as positive for the U.S. economy, which in the long run will be bringing some positive traction in favor of the U.S. dollar. Now, from the previous data we had here, it came in at 3.7%, and economists are projecting a 2.5% for this incoming data we are looking forward to, which gives us a sign that there's been a little bit of contraction compared to the previous data. So we look forward to see what the actual data is going to be like. Then we also have a series of durable goods order, including the um, excluding the defense, excluding transport, all of which are coming up simultaneously um, today. And then if you look at the data we have here for the durable goods order, we have an expectation that looks significantly higher than the previous data um, which came in in the month of August at 1.5%, which is a very considerable um um, variance that we have there. So we want to see what the data will be on that one. Then the one excluding transportation is coming a little bit lesser than the previous month at minus, sorry, 0.2%, which is um, shows that there has been some contraction there, though we had a growth of 0.2%. So we look forward to see what that one too is saying. Then the most important event coming in from the United States this today is the gross domestic product annualized for quarter three. Then you would agree with me that this is a very important one. Everyone will definitely want to be looking forward to this event. And it, it provides us insight into the overall health of the U.S. economy, hereby impacting investor sentiment and influencing our trading decisions. Then besides this, we also have some data coming in from the labor sector, which is the initial jobless claim. Then we also have the personal consumption expenditure. Then we have a couple of speeches also. We have Christopher Wallace's speech coming up later today in about two hours from now also. Uh, everyone will be looking forward to see what he will say as whatever he says here will give us an insight into the central bank's outlook on the economy, potential policy shifts and interest rate changes, hereby impacting trading decisions and, of course, the market sentiment. The later on today from the United Kingdom economic docket is Conlife. Conlife is the deputy governor for the financial stability of the Bank of England. So he's going to be having a speech today too as well. We want to see what he will say about the UK economy. And then whatever he says, of course, will be giving us clues into how to manage our current positions on the GBP USD. 
So with all this information we have on the economic calendar, you know how we do it as, as technical traders. We know that the anticipation of this event alone has a tendency of influencing the market sentiment, which will reflect on the chart as price action. Now, talking about price action, we will be diving into our first assets for this week, which is, of course, um, the U.S. All Sports. Like I always say, I don't know why my U.S. All Sports usually take quite a long time before it loads up. So let's, while we wait for that to happen, um, let's see if we have any comments here. Okay, so I see you, CLTSK. Good morning to you, Evolve. Good morning to you, um, Joyce Green. Good morning to you. all. Right, so here we go. So the first asset on our watch list is the US All Sports, and in fact, we have quite an interesting situation right now as price action is currently consolidating. Uh, within a range and this kind of situation requires a lot of patience for us to um, wait for new trading opportunities to happen. Now yesterday we witnessed the publication from the Energy Information Administration which revealed a surprising uptick in the US crude inventories as we saw figures rising by 1.4 million barrels as against the previous week which came in at 421 million barrels um, for, the penulti for the penultimate week. This is an unexpected increase and it of course suggests a potential slowdown in fuel demand within the US market. And the mixed fundamental landscape has left market participant hesitant hereby refraining from making aggressive bets on the high prices as at this time mm -hmm. now with the way things are going here let's look at things from a technical standpoint on the chart and to do that i would like us to run through how we begin our analysis um, on the one hour time frame at the beginning of this week so the first thing we saw here at the beginning of the week was in price was initially consolidating between the $87.50 level and the $86.60 area to emphasize the level of indecision at the point in time. And of course, you know how we use this kind of flat channel in this community. Whenever we see price fall into a range, we exercise patience and wait for either the breakout of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy or the breakdown of the support line to give us an opportunity to sell. And of course, we did have a buy position triggered at the beginning of the week, which unfortunately went into a loss as we saw price move about 35 to 40 pips in our favor before sellers came in to take us out of that position and thank goodness we were able to recoup the loss we incurred at the beginning of the week as you would remember that we had a sell stop order below the support line here to capitalize on the next move and as soon as price broke down the structure at the $86.60 level we had our first sell position triggered for the new week and since then we have been selling the US all spots. Now, something interesting happened during the um, trading session on Tuesday when we also spotted another range between the $86 level and the $85.20 area where price was initially consolidating. And one interesting thing about that zone is the fact that it is, was consolidating around the strong demand zone as at that point in time. So we were waiting for either the breakout or breakdown of that range for an opportunity to join the momentum. And of course, we saw price break down the support line of that range, welcoming more selling opportunities in the market. And we wrote the move all the way into the $83 area, scooping over 200 pips. Let's see how many pips that was. So the first position moved over 360 pips and the second position here moved over 200 pips. So we had roughly of over 500 pips as at the second day of this week, which is not bad a figure 
at all. Now, during our live session yesterday, we had a critical zone right here. And of course, remember, I told us all to move all the stop losses of our sell positions just right above the 83 dollar 82 cent level and the reason why we did this was simply because of this beautiful range we noticed around this area then we said we will be waiting for either the breakout or breakdown of that range to give us an opportunity to trade however a couple of hours into the new york session we did saw how price broke down the support line of that range pushing price to the downside and i think price moved about a hundred pips before we were taken out of that position and i do hope that you moved your stop losses accordingly as you know how we do it in this community as soon as price moves significantly well in our favor we do want to be moving our stop losses secure the position so that we don't get caught up in any scenario that results in a pullback and if we had done that um, we must have been taken out of all the sell position with a considerable amount of profit in total now moving on we saw price climb back up break out of that resistant line of that range retested it on the lower time frame to incite another move as you will see price moved another 150 pips in our favor now one thing we said during our live session yesterday is that while we are taking advantage of that buy position that we want to be taking into consideration the zone here that depending on how price reacts to the zone will be determining if we are going to be adding more buy position or getting ready to sell and one of the reasons why we said this is simply because of how important this structure was and for the fact that price was price broke down that level and from a technical standpoint when price break down such levels like this we expect that some point in time price may come back retest that zone to incite a downtrend scenario now if you have seen what has been going on in this market in the last 12 to 13 hours you will see that this area had been characterized with a lot of selling pressure and if you had bought at this point at the 83 dollar 82 cent level i do hope you had moved your stop losses after noticing this sell sell pressure uh persisting right below or around that $85 area. So if you had done that, well done to you. And if you had not, please move your stop losses accordingly right now. So with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action for today? Are we going to continue selling since we started the week on a very strong bearish note? Or are there chances that buyers can come in at any point in time to incite another wave of bullish momentum now for us to capitalize on the next move i would like us to first of all have an holistic perspective into what is really going on in this market and in fact for the sake of those who are not part of our earlier sessions to be on the same page with us today now to scale up now we are going to the four hours time frame where we shall be refreshing our memories as to what we saw during the um, first trading day of this week now we started the week on the four hours time frame where we saw a beautiful um, downtrend continuation pattern in the form of a wedge now to give a visual representation of what i'm talking about here we saw this impulsive move all the way into the 81 dollar area and since then we saw price transition into what looks like a wedge which from a technical standpoint is considered to be a downtrend continuation pattern. And to make this pattern validated, we will need price to break down the support line of that pattern, which was exactly what happened on Tuesday's trading session. Now, since price has broken down that structure, we of course want to be looking at the potentials of more selling opportunities now in addition to that pattern was that um, key level which was situated around the 87 dollar 50 cent area definitely uh, this level here had played a major role in determining the direction of price action since the month of september and of course you know how we do it in this community whenever we have key levels like this we want to 
only sell if price remains below that key level and of course that is exactly what happened in this market since the beginning of this week now where the way things are going right now and the fact that price has broken down the support line of that downtrend continuation pattern we do expect that some point in time price may come back to retest the trend line or that key level to incite a downtrend move and in fact since price tested the 82 81 dollar area right here on tuesday stroke wednesday we saw some bullish momentum happen began and the question at this point is is this momentum going to extend into the key level where we want to see how the market will react to that structure to know what our next line of action will be or how we're going to be seeing a downtrend continuation from this area now if you look at this structure closely you will see that price action um, found selling pressure at a very critical point around that 85 dollar area which we identified on the one hour time frame as you will see that since the early hours of today we have been noticing selling pressure around that area in an area which had been a strong demand zone in the last couple of weeks as you will see here before it was broken to the downside on tuesday and from a technical standpoint we expect price to retest it to incite a downtrend move so now the question is are we going to be seeing a retest to incite a downtrend scenario or are we going to be seeing price break out back into the 87 dollar 50 cent level where we shall be looking forward to see how the market will react to that price level now with the information we have gathered on the four hours time frame we would like to scale back down into the one hour time frame where we shall be looking out for new opportunities for today's trading session now scaling down into the one hour time frame this is what i was able to spot this morning so while trying to dissect this structure here you will see that price is uh, finding selling pressure around that de previous demand zone that was broken on tuesday and it appears price is retesting it to incite a downtrend continuation so when i zoomed into that structure this is what i found i saw a range where price was confined within the 85 dollar 30 cent level and the 84 dollar 85 cent area to emphasize the level of indecision at that point and to further confirm that we are at a crucial juncture in this market how do you know how we do it in this community whenever we identify a range like this we want to exercise patience while we wait for either the breakout of the range to happen to give us an opportunity to buy or we wait for the breakdown of the range to happen to give us an opportunity to sell and in fact with this in mind we saw how price broke down the 84 dollar 45 cent level to trigger a sell position and in fact if you had missed out on that opportunity the market was so kind enough came back again to retest the structure to incite a downtrend continuation and if you really have taken advantage of this opportunity in fact i'm well done to you for being on standby to capitalize let alone even observing and noticing this setup however if you had missed out on this opportunity there's no problem and um, we are going to be looking at how we can also capitalize on the downtrend move if price will decide to continue to the downside now for those of us who took advantage of the breakout of breakdown of the 84 dollar 85 cent level with the intentions of a downtrend continuation kindly move your stop losses right now and i'm going to be advising you to move your stop losses to the entry point as at this point we are not going to be considering this bearish move as profit at all anything could still happen here buyers could still come in at any point in time so let's move our stop loss to break even so that the worst case scenario that we can see here is neither a loss nor profit now with a well secured position at this juncture what is going to be our next line of action for today now what i did here is to identify another level 
at the $84.38 area and this is simply because of the way price action had reacted to this area. Now if you look at what happened um, during the later part of the New York session yesterday, we saw both selling pressure and buy pressure around that area and in the last four to five hours we saw how sellers were actually struggling to break through before it took price back into that zone so i was of the opinion that if price will further drop to the downside again breaking down the 84 dollar 38 cent level i will be adding more sell position which is exactly what is going on right now now for those of us who had missed out on the sell position let's wait and see if the market will be giving us new opportunities of course you know that from a technical standpoint when price breaks down a structure such as the 84 dollar 38 cent level that we have here we expect that some point in time price may come back retest the structure to incite a downtrend move so if you had missed out on that opportunity let's see if the market will come back retest the structure give us some selling pressure below on our lower time frame to give us a new opportunity to join the downtrend continuation and if price continues to drop we have levels like the 83 dollar 82 cent area we also have the $83 level, which um, which you can see right here. And of course, the um, $81 area, $81.80 level to add more sell position if price continues to drop to the downside. Now, there is a caveat to this setup, which I would like to emphasize at this juncture. Now, let's look at this critically well. Now, remember that during our live session yesterday, we talked about this range here where price was broken out of at the, at the, during the New York session yesterday. And from a technical standpoint, when price breaks out of a structure, we expect some tries retracing back into that area to incite an uptrend move. So in as much as we're looking out for selling opportunities here, and if price continues to drop to the downside, as soon as it gets into the $83.82 level, kindly move your stop losses, secure your current sell position, and let's exercise patience and wait to see how the market participant will be reacting to this level. Now, if we begin to see a breakdown of the structure, then this further emphasize the strength of the sellers so we will be looking out for more selling opportunities at the breakdown retest of that structure however if instead we begin to notice buy pressure around this area as we see sellers finding it difficult to break down and settle below the $83.82 level where price action transitions into a reversal pattern then this might be the beginning of an uptrend continuation so let's keep this in mind while we continue to enjoy the bearish momentum please note that as soon as price gets into that 83 dollar 82 cent level move all your stop losses maybe to around the 84 dollar 38 zone wait to see how the market will react to that structure to determine what our next course of action will be so that is how we are going to be managing our positions on the us all spot for today so i do hope you will mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today's trading session so if you have any questions whatsoever as regards the current setup or you need me to shed more light in a particular area you find um, clumsy or not too clear please feel free to let me know in the comment section so as usual i'm going to be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions whatsoever while i while you also take that time to mark out those levels on your chat as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your trading decisions for today
All right, I see your comment, Ricato, Gallant04, and um, Saki. Good morning to you guys, and glad to have you around. Um, Oai Tang, good morning to you. Med4244, good morning to you too as well. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, we'll move on to the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list today is the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. And in fact, we have quite an interesting situation going on on the US Tech 100 as the last 24 hours we have witnessed um, a very strong bearish momentum which I do hope that you guys took advantage of as it fell through according to our expectations. Now let's start the week. How did we start the week? Remember we were buying the US Tech 100 at the beginning of the week and of course we did make some profit off the buy positions before the sellers came into as well giving us much more profits to hold on to in this market now the week started with a consolidation phase which is always peculiar with the market structure at the beginning of the week now look at what happened here at the beginning of the week we saw our price was initially confined within the fourteen thousand six hundred and fifteen dollar level and the fourteen thousand five hundred and forty five area and of course you know how we do it whenever we have this kind of range we exercise patience and waiting for either the breakout or breakdown of that range for an opportunity to either buy or sell now at the beginning of the week prior to the um, inception of the live session I told us all that I had a sell position triggered after observing the breakdown of that support line giving us the idea that price may likely be going bearish now for those who missed out at the beginning of the week of this opportunity I told us all to exercise patience and wait for a retest of structure which will be characterized with selling pressure to join the decline which never happened of course and we agreed that if price will break out of the 14,545 level will join an uptrend move we did have the buy position trigger there then we also had more positions at the breakout of the 14,615 level now if you had missed out on that breakout you can see how kind enough the market was it came back to retest the structure and boom it moved back into that area before we saw the barrier from the sellers pushing price to the downside from the 14,750. So as at the first day of the week, we were able to scoop in over, over 100 pips after moving our stop losses to secure all position as we got taken out um, a couple of days ago. And during our live session yesterday, we were able to identify a range which we said we will be using to guide our trading decisions for yesterday's trading session so what we saw here was a simple range where price was confined within the 14,750 and the 14,615 level to emphasize the level of indecision at that point in time now coupled with the indecision, indecision and uncertainty here was this beautiful formation of a shooting star candle which from a technical standpoint reveals the presence of sellers around this area and with this observation in mind we were anticipating a potential breakdown of that ascending trend line and we said if this ascending trend line is broken then the support below the support line of this range had the 14,615 level will be a beautiful area for us to join a bearish move and as you will see price broke down the structure pushed further to the downside and remember that we had multiple levels which we said we will be using to add more sell positions so we had the breakdown of the 14,545 
we also had a breakdown of the 14,500 level, which happens to be our key level for the week. And we also had the breakdown of the 14,430, giving us a minimum of four positions running in profit. And if we are going to be taking an account of how many pips in total that is, you will see that the first buy position is running with about 350, sorry, first sell position is running with about 350 pips in profit. Second position running with about 290 pips in profit, giving us a total of 640. Then we have the third position running with about 240 pips, giving us about 800 plus pips, while the fourth position here is running with about 170 pips. So we have roughly approximately a thousand pips running in profit. And if we had that to the profit we made on the buy position we took on Monday, uh, that's over a thousand pips in profit um, as sat the fourth day of the week. So that's quite an immense opportunity we were able to capitalize on. So in that regard, we shall be considering the US Tech 100 as the most profitable has set among our watch list for this week. And for those of us who took advantage of these opportunities, well done to you for being on standby to capitalize on these moves. Now, the next thing you want to be doing right now is to ensure that you secure these current sell positions by moving your stop losses accordingly. And based on what we have here and looking at the previous structure, which falls around the 14,290 area. So I would advise us to move all stop losses to anywhere between the 14,290 and the 14,350 area, keeping in mind that we need to give enough room for price action to breathe. Now, with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action as we anticipate the GDP data coming up in about two hours from now? Before we go into the details on how we are going to be positioning ourselves for today, the first thing I would like us to do here is to quickly run through the higher time frame so we can have an holistic perspective into what is going on here. And for those of you who missed out on our earlier session, this is an opportunity for you to be on the same page with us. Now, at the beginning of the week, we started our analysis on the daily time frame. Now, on the daily time frame, we observed that since the beginning of this year, price action was more of on a bullish momentum. And in fact, we went, took a step further to connect the series of higher lows here, which gave us this beautiful ascending trend line, which has consistently been respected since the beginning of the year. And not until last week's trading session that we witnessed the breakdown of that ascending trend line for the first time. And because we had the breakdown of this ascending trend line, we were anticipating a sell opportunity. But we were not jumping into conclusion. As you all know that we had a barrier around the 14,500 area, which had played a major role in negating all the attempt by the sellers to break through that structure since the month of June. Now, that level there was now serving as our key level for the week. And you know how we use our key levels in this community. As long as price breaks down the key level to the downside, then we want to be looking out for market conditions that will support the idea of selling that asset. Now, we saw what happened since June. We saw how this level here had been playing a major role in negating all attempt by the sellers to break through this area. Now, despite the breakdown of that ascending trend line that was last week, we saw a sharp rejection of that trend of that level. So at the beginning of the week, we were saying price may either come back to retest the ascending trend line to incite a downtrend continuation or probably get to as far as this descending trend line to incite the downtrend. However, we saw what happened in the last couple of days. Price retested the ascending trend line to push price to the downside. And right now, you will see that price has finally and for the first time in the last five months, broken down that key level 
had the 14,500. Now that we have price action below our key level, we obviously want to be looking out for patterns and structures that will support the idea of selling this asset. Now to do this, we will need to scale down to a much more lower time frame. And to do that, we will be scaling back down to our one hour time frame to see how we are going to be capitalizing on the next move. Now, this is the 14,500 duly marked out on our one hour time frame. So let me just readjust this a little bit so we can see things more clearly. Now, if you see the 14,500 area, it shares a beautiful confluence with this ascending trend line we marked out here during our live session. Now, the fact that price action has broken down both the ascending trend line and the key level is a sign that price may be going further to the downside. Now, the question here is, when is the next bearish momentum going to start? Now, from a technical standpoint, whenever we have a breakdown of a key structure such as the ascending trend line and that key level at the 14,500, we expect that some point in time, price may come back, retest that structure, it may come back into the 14,430, the 14,500, or even the ascending trend line, where most importantly, we want to be looking out for reversal patterns to join the downtrend move. Mm -hmm. Now that price is at an area around the 14,200, where we have been observing some buy pressure since the early hours of today, how do we intend to join this? So will this buy pressure we've seen here be the beginning of the retracement phase of that bearish impulse leg? Well, let's look at what the structure is saying on a much more lower time frame. Now, if we scale down into the 15 minutes time frame, we should be able to see something that we can use to guide our decisions going forward. Now, the first thing I want to do here is to mark out this level here at the 14,250 area, which happens to be a key level, sorry, a psychological level, considering the round figure of that price. So you do want to be marking this one out right now on your chart. So we have the 14,250 level marked out on our chart. So let's see how the market is going to be reacting to this level. Now, since price dropped, and found a low, let's see, we had a low right here, that's um, the 14,170. So let's mark that level to out, 14,170. That's the lowest point price action has been for this week. Now we saw price drop into this area. We saw some selling pressure around the 14,250 before price dropped into that lowest point. And finally, during the early hours of today, we saw price break out, retest, break out, retest. So it shows that the 14,250 wants to become a platform that will begin the retracement of that impulsive move, hereby insinuating a counter trend opportunity. Now, if you are a counter trend trader and you feel comfortable taking this kind of trade, or you are a scalper, then you might want to start getting ready for a buying opportunity with the hopes of having your TP target around that key level we identified on the higher time frame. Now, if this continues, that is price continues to stay above the 14,250, and in fact, you are yet to buy this, then I will just suggest you have a buy stop order above the 14,280, which happens to be the highest point for today's trading session. This is the highest point price has gotten for today. So we have the 14,280 level. Let's mark this out on our chart. Then I'd like to have this at the top. Okay. So we want to have a buy stop order around that area with our stop losses sitting anywhere below the 14,230, which will be dovetailing into about 45 to about 55 pip stop loss on this one. Now, if price continues to the upside, please note that this is a counter trend opportunity. Then you want to be capitalizing on that move all the way into either the 14,500 zone 
or the ascending trend line where we would like to see how the market participant will be reacting to that zone to determine if we are going to be added more sell position if price climbs back above the ascending trend line or sell if continued selling pressure persists below that structure and this move alone will dovetail to a minimum of 200 pips to a maximum of about 300 pips to catch here if price continues to the upside so this is for counter trend traders and scalpers but if you are a long-term trader like me and have sold move your stop losses and let's wait at this bus stop here between the 14,500, 14,430 and the ascending trend that was broken to see how the market will react for our next line of action for today. So that is how we are going to be managing our positions on the US Tech 100 for today. So I would advise you to mark out these levels on your charts and see, let's see how the market will play out. However, if instead price is unable to break out of the 14,280 and it drops and breaks down the 14,170 level, which happens to be the lowest point for this week, then we will be joining the downtrend continuation. So for those of us who are already in this position, we want to be thinking of adding more sell positions to our existing trade. So while the 14,170 becomes an area where we shall be looking out for selling opportunities, the 14,280 will be that area we shall be looking out for buying opportunities. So our center of focus is basically between that area. Uh, let's wait and see how the market will be reacting to this zone to determine what our next line of action will be. So these are my view on the US Tech 100 for today's trading session. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So as usual, we shall be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds to see if there are any questions while I advise you to use that time to mark out those levels on your chart. So I will be, um, I'm already out of time, so let's just wait for some couple of seconds, then we move on to the next asset on our watch list, okay? Then one more thing I would like to ask, I would like to say here on this 15 minutes time frame is that we can actually take advantage of a sell position even before the breakdown of the 14,170 happens. That is, if price breaks back down the 14,250 and we continue to see selling pressure below the structure, that is, buyers are losing the steam of initiating a counter trend opportunity, then we can actually join below the 14,250 to add more positions below the 14,170. So let's take note of this too as well. So with that being said, and in the absence of no questions, let's move on to the next asset on our watch list. So the next asset on our watch list for today is the GBPUSD. And in fact, in the last 24 48 hours we've had a phenomenal sell position running in this market as price action continue to drop further to the downside and economically things are not looking very um good for the pound sterling at this point as the price continues to weaken falling below that 1.2100 level and extending its decline from this week's high which was around the 1.22890 level remember we were buying at the beginning of the week where we were able to scoop in over 200 pips now this downward pressure on the currency is driven by risk aversion as tension in the middle east and rising u.s bond yields is bolstering the demand for the u.s dollar now the upcoming release of the key gdp data 
further hurt to the strength of the US dollar. However, it is worth noting that the price action has returned to a very, very important demand zone right here, which makes it a very crucial moment for us as we will need quite a lot of patience here before making the next decisions. Now, before we go into the details and for the sake of those who missed out on our earlier sessions, I would like to take us quickly through how the week began and what led to the decisions we made in this market so far this week. Now, at the beginning of this week, it was more of a consolidation phase. Remember, price was sitting on a very robust demand zone, which we identified on the higher time frame, leading into a scenario where price was confined within this range between the 1.21660 level and the 1.21450 area to emphasize the uncertainty that gripped this market at the beginning of this week. And as a result of this, you know how we do it in this community. We do want to exercise patience and wait to for a signal to come either in the form of a breakdown of the structure to give us an opportunity to sell, which never happened, of course how the breakout retest of the resistant line to give us an opportunity to buy, which was exactly what happened in this um, area. Now, we saw price broke out the resistant line, which triggered our first buy position. And remember that we also had that one more position had the breakout of the 1.218, which also happened as we rode the momentum all the way into the 1.22890. Now, the first position here gave us over 120 pips, while the second position gave us over 100 pips, as you will see here, giving us roughly over 300 pips before the bearish momentum came in. And if you were with us on Tuesday, I told you that um, I'm not going to be selling. Remember, I said the bearish momentum we are witnessing here may likely be the retracement of that impulsive move to push price to the upside. But unfortunately, that was not what happened. And right here on Tuesday, I made mention that if price will break down this ascending trend line, and if you are a counter trend trader, you might want to capitalize on the breakdown retest of both the ascending trend line and the 1.22450 level to join the downtrend move, which of course I didn't because of the nature of that momentum at the beginning of the week. So I was actually wrong. And for those who actually sold, you will definitely be in a massive profit of over 170 pips in profit on that single position. And during our live session yesterday, we were able to spot a range with between the 1.2180 level and the 1.21450 area where I said that a breakout or breakdown of that range will be giving us an opportunity to trade. And I told us all that we are not going to be buying unless price breaks out the 1.218, which of course never happened. And the next option here was the breakdown of the 1.2145. And in fact, if you missed out on that one, price came back to retest the structure to incite the downtrend continuation. And if you are taking advantage of that one, well done to you, as this was the only sell position I was able to take for this week, given me or you at this point about 70 pips in profit and if for those of you who had been selling in the last two days you will definitely at maximize your profit on this current sell position and once again well done to everyone who are taking advantage of this opportunity now the next thing i would like to tell you right now is to ensure that you move all your stop losses secure this current position as we are at a crucial juncture in this market as price action is currently trading within a robust demand zone and in fact if you look at what has been going on here in the last six seven eight hours now we have been noting some consolidation going on at this point giving us clues into the level of uncertainty that is happening around this area 
Now, with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action? How do we intend to capitalize on the next move? Now, to do this, I would like to show you something significant on the 4 hours time frame, which we deliberated on at the beginning of the week. Now, let's zoom into this current structure, and this is where it becomes very crucial. We are at a strong demand zone between the 1.2100 level and the 1.20500 area, which has been persistent since the last trading days of the month of September. As you will see here, sellers have always struggled when price gets into this area, as majority in the market have always seen the pound sterling as cheap enough to buy around this area. Now that we are back into the structure, we need to be very, very careful as buyers goes to come in and take over the market from this area. Now, what we are going to be, another thing that is buttressing this whole bearish momentum here is this downtrend continuation pattern which we spotted here yesterday so to give a visual representation here so following this impulsive move all the way into this area we saw price find higher lows giving us this trend line then we saw lower highs giving us this bearish trend line as you see here and if you look at the structure it looks like a wedge which is a downtrend continuation pattern and for us to sell we want to see price break down the support line of that pattern retest the structure to join the downtrend scenario and as it is right now looking at what has been going on in this market in the last four to five hours it is quite clear that price action had broken down the support line now because of where we are right now being inside a demand zone we might likely be seeing some bullish pressure come in at some point bringing price to retest the structure maybe to continue the downtrend continuation and in fact if price climbs back up above the ascending trend line and continue buy pressure above this area then we would like to be in a buy position and a further breakout of the 1.21800 area here will be welcoming more buying opportunities so while we're looking out for more selling opportunities we will not ignore the potentials of buyers considering the fact that we are sitting within a strong demand zone so let's keep that in mind now if price does not come back at all into the structure to retest it and it continues to nose dive then a breakdown of the 1.20 level which happens to be our key level for this week will be welcoming more selling opportunities and for me personally if the breakdown of the 1.2 happens I'm of the opinion that price will drop further to the downside massively. So we do want to be on standby for that one too as well. So let's see how the market is going to build up ahead of the GDP data today. And of course, how the market is going to be reacting to the GDP data will tell a lot on our next line of action. So we are going to be focusing around that demand zone to see what our next line of action will be on the GBP USD. So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. As usual, I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds. I wouldn't be taking up to that this time around. I'm already out of time here and let's see what happens afterwards. So if you have questions, feel free to let me know and um, you can use that time to mark out those levels on your chat. All right, all right, because of the short time we have, I will just, um, um, since there are no questions, I will just move on to the next asset at this point in time.
So the next asset on our watch list for today is my favorite, and that is the XAU USD. What a wonderful asset this is for me personally. You know, this is my favorite. And what do we have on this chart? I think I've been taken out of all my buy positions right now as sellers gradually gain some momentum at this point in time in the last couple of hours or so. Now, uh, well, um, the gold continues to rally despite the strong um, U.S. Treasury bond. Um, they, and the gold, you know, for of course, the gold is, um, uh, is rallying right now. And of course, it's also fueled by the widespread risk aversion, which is driven by the escalating tension in the Middle East. Now, this surge in demand for the safe haven asset has overshadowed the impact of rising U.S. Treasury bond yields. Remember that the U.S. Treasury bonds have been gaining some momentum since the beginning of this week, and a lot of people have been putting their capital in the Treasury bond from the U.S. economy. Now, despite this, we still see a lot of people placing their bets on the gold spot. And a strengthening U.S. dollar factors that typically dampen the appeal of the non-yielding precious metal. Well, within the situation we have here right now, everything is still looking very bullish for the for the for the US dollar. For, sorry for the XAU USD. Now before we go into the details here, let's quickly run through what we saw at the beginning of the week and what led to the decisions we were making yesterday. Now remember that the week did not really start very good for us on the XAU USD as we initially had a buy position which was taken out on Tuesday after sellers came in to take it take out all the buy positions after that breakout of the 1978 level. Now, in addition to this, we during our live session yesterday, we were able to identify a platform around the 1950 zone, which has been peculiar with buy pressure for quite a while now. And in fact, even when we saw that strong bearish momentum that came in on Tuesday, we saw how it became difficult for sellers to even break through or settle in that demand zone as we saw this beautiful armor candle inciting the idea that buyers are still very, very present in this market. Now, despite this old lower highs we have been witnessing since the beginning of this week. Now, finally, finally, yesterday, we saw our price broke out of that trend line, which, of course, was what we were looking for yesterday to capitalize on the uptrend scenario so we saw price broke out of that descending trend line here and remember that we said we will be adding more buy positions at the breakout of the one thousand nine seventy eight dollar fifty cent level added more positions at the breakout of the one thousand nine eight five and of course the one thousand nine hundred area and as soon as we have a breakout i do hope that you Move to your stop losses to secure your position. If you had done that, you must have been taken out of your buy positions at this point in time because I have been taken out of my buy position right now. Now, with the current situation we have here, I will only be deliberating on the one hour time frame because of my time is already off right now. Now, let's look at what things are looking like since the beginning of this month. Now, if you remember vividly, we talked about this as at the beginning of this week. So I will just zoom this out a little bit so we can see things more clearly. So since the beginning of this month, price action has been riding the bullish momentum. And if we connect the series of higher lows, we have this beautiful ascending trend line, which has consistently and uniformly been respected since the beginning of this month and of course you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community as long as price action remains above the ascending trend line we shall feel comfortable in our buy positions while we also look out for more buying opportunity and for the fact that price still remains above this ascending trend line i'm still hoping and thinking that buyers still have a chance of dictating the pace today. Now, in addition to that trend line is our key level situated at the 1,985 area, which of course, you know how we use our key levels in this community. As long as price remains above the key level, 
will continue to look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying that asset. Now, price still remains above that key level. Then we also have a temporary trend line which has been respected since last since this Tuesday. As you will see, price still remains above that trend line again. So everything here is screaming towards the bullish direction. However, we cannot ignore the potentials of sellers at this point. Why? Now, if you look at what has been going on since last week, Friday, you will see that this area between the 1,999, 1,997 level of shy of the $2,000 psychological area, we have been noticing selling pressure around that area. Now, look at what happened here last week, Friday. We saw a huge sharp rejection of that area giving us a shooting stock candle revealing the presence of sellers around that area which of course reveals that there's some level of fear as those who have bought the gold at a very cheap price are now looking at the price as too high to feel very comfortable in their position and in that regard when price gets too high like this we usually see profit taking activity come in and if they start coming in it reflects on the chart as retracement moves consolidation phase and choppy scenario which has engulfed this market in the last one week and right now price is back into that zone and in the last two to three hours we have seen another level of selling pressure come in again so because of this we cannot ignore the potentials of the sellers at this point in time. Now, what is it that we want to see on this chart that will make us feel comfortable selling? And of course, what is it that we want to see on this chart that will make us feel comfortable buying? Now, let's talk about the potentials of the buyers first of all. Now, for me to consider buying the XAUSD today, I would rather want to see price take out all the sell position within that zone around the 1997 and the 1990 area like an engulfing candle slicing through the zone all the way to the upside retest of structure confirming more opportunities to join the uptrend move however it might not come in the form of an engulfing candle it could actually come in the form of higher highs and higher lows within this area and if we begin to see this then we know that buyers are gradually gaining momentum and the fact that price still remains above this ascending trend line will give us more confidence to stay in the buy position and please ensure you have your stop losses and in this case scenario you do want to be having a wider stop loss because of the tendency of some volatility coming up today because of the gdp data everyone is looking forward to now that is the only condition that will make me want to be buying the xau usd today so most importantly i want to see price take out all the sell position within that zone to feel comfortable buying however if the sell position sell positions around the 1990 and the 1997 persist here and buyers are finding it difficult to break through that barrier then i would rather want to see price break down this ascending trend line remember this ascending trend line has been the one holding the bullish momentum since the beginning of this month and if price breaks down this trend line this will be the first time price action will be breaking down that ascending trend line this month which will be a significant factor to look out for a potential momentum shift and one interesting thing about this ascending trend line is the fact that it also shares a beautiful confluence with the 1985 level which happens to be our key level making it a sweet spot to look out for selling opportunities if price breaks down the structure now for me to sell here i would rather want to see price break down the 1985 break down that ascending trend line then at this point we'll start considering selling now remember you are not going to be getting too excited here as it could still turn out to be a false breakdown so we'll want to wait for some significant confirmation signs that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above the ascending trend line which will reflect on the chart as price coming back to retest the structure continue selling pressure below this area then 
we want to be part of a downtrend move. So that is the only condition here that will make us feel comfortable selling the XAU USD. So these are my views here on the XAU USD. So let's see how this is going to play out. So basically speaking, our center of focus for today is between the 1,990 level and the 1,985 area we are depending on the direction of the breakout will inform us of what we are going to be doing next. So it's on this note I would like to round off and while I'm rounding off if you do have any questions feel free to drop them in the comment section I'm checking the comment section from time to time to see if there is any help I can offer you as regards to the setups and deliberations we've had today so it has been a wonderful moment with you guys today as we were able to attend to four major assets which includes the US All Sport, the US Tech 100 the GBP USD and finally the XAU USD, popularly known as the Gold Sports, and all of which we were able to identify simple um, setups that we are going to be using to guide our decisions for today's trading session. So I do hope that you are able to mark out these levels on your chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to guide your independent trading decisions for today. And that reminds me for those of you who joined us for the first time, I do hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed here today. And if you truly did, I will look forward to seeing you same time tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing. And let's get ready for the last trading day of the week, which comes up tomorrow. And it's of course going to be a very exciting and interesting one as we anticipate how majority of the market will be closing in of their positions ahead of the weekend. So it's on this note I wish us all the best of luck today and hoping to see you same time tomorrow. Do have a wonderful evening everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>